God is faithful and worthy of the glory. Amen. I want you to get your Bibles out this morning. I feel like I need to just get into the Word of God right now. How many of you are ready right now? In the name of Jesus, I want you to turn with me to the book of Psalms, Psalms 118, verse 24, Psalms 118, verse 24. While I was gone on this trip, one day I was talking to some men that were with me on the trip, and we began to speak a little bit about the day, the day, that day, getting victory that day. Sometimes people go through bad days. Sometimes it's a day of temptation. It's a day of trouble. Sometimes it can seem like a stormy day. You get up in the morning and very soon it's a stormy day. It's a dark day. It's a day of trouble. It's a day of temptation. It's a day the enemy has just decided to come against you. It seems like a day that just situations try to rise up that day. How many of you with me say amen? I read in the Bible not long ago again in the story of David and Goliath. All of a sudden, one day, Goliath just shows up and begins to defy the armies of the living God. Forty days later, David shows up. On the day he shows up, the enemy is defeated that day. Everybody say that day. Even though for 40 days he had been working his lie, 40 days he had been messing with the children of Israel, 40 days he had been inflicting fear and worry into their minds to the point that they could not move a muscle, they could not make a decision. Some days people just wake up and that day they worry all day. That day they're under attack that day. Somebody shout that day. How many understand you ever been through one of those kinds of days? that that day it just seems like all hell broke loose that day. You went to work and that day other people tried to dump their mess into your life that day. I came to tell you this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I determined to preach to you a message today that no matter what day it is, no matter what happens that day, no matter what the enemy does that day, Day, no matter what tries to attack you that day that if you'll determine wait just a minute this is the day that the Lord made the enemy's trying to turn it into his day the enemy's trying to make me worry all day but I declare this is the day that the Lord has made the Lord made this day for me I'm going to be more than a conqueror today I'm going to defeat this today in the name of Jesus. This is not going to carry on till tomorrow because today, today is the day the Lord made this day for me. I will rejoice. Devil, you're not going to steal my joy today. You're not going to steal my victory today. You're not going to take my health from me today. You're not going to take anything from me. You're not going to give me your sorrow, your fear, your worry, for this is the day. Can I help you this morning? Can I encourage you how to get the victory every day? I want you to live. We're just around the corner to 2014. Just around the corner to a brand new year. John Hagee says, and they're backing it up with astronomy, there'll be four blood moons next year. If you've read the book, if you've listened a little bit to it, the last time that there was a four blood moon was when Israel became a nation. When there were four blood moons, was 1492 when a Jewish man discovered America in 1492. Anytime there have been four blood moons there have been something that has happened in the world. Something that has taken place. Well ladies and gentlemen I don't know about the four blood moons but I know about one bloody cross. Somebody say amen that I've got the right, will you let me preach to you a minute, to reach over 2,000 years ago, reach back into 2,000 years ago and put my hands on that precious blood and sprinkle that precious blood in my mind, sprinkle that precious blood on my heart, sprinkle that living blood on my body, on my mind. I got it on my hands. I got it on my feet. I got it all over me. Hallelujah. I got it on my wife. I got it on my kids. I got it on my friends. I got it on my church. I got it on my money. I got it on me. It's the blood of the Lamb. 
Somebody give God a crazy praise. I've been thinking about it because the other day the Lord said to me, just said it out loud, when I see the blood. <laughs> when I see the blood, shout it out. When I see the blood. He said, I said it then and I'm still saying it today. When I see the blood, I'm a coming. When I see the blood, I'm a passing by. When I see the blood, I'm barking the destroyer. When I see the blood, you'll be safe and sound. When I see the blood, I'm coming. Woo! Somebody give God a crazy praise. Hallelujah, God is good, amen. Hebrews chapter 13, verse eight. Let's begin to establish the fact that we're gonna win every day. Let's get it in, let's sow it in. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Let's get it into us in the name of Jesus that no matter if it starts out a bad day, a dark day, a sick day, a hurting day, the past tries to rise up in you that you're gonna get the victory that day. Everybody say today. To help you with this, I'm going to strengthen you and let you know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Somebody shout amen. The Jesus Christ of yesterday is the Jesus that shed his blood 2,000 years ago on an old rugged cross and established a brand new covenant with brand new promises and delivered us out from under the law and were saved by faith through grace in the name of Jesus. And we're no longer under the law, but we're under the grace of the living God. Somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But I need this word today that Jesus Christ is the same today. I know somebody's gonna grab it with me. Put it in your heart pocket. Put it in your emotions. Put it in your mouth. Put it in your thinking. I know he's the same yesterday. I know he's the same forever. But today, I need to know today. When it starts to try to work on me today. When temptation comes today. When weakness comes today. I want to know how to get the victory every day. Thanks be unto God that gives me the victory. I want to get the victory every day. So Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Somebody give God a crazy praise. Today. Today. Because sometimes just today is a rough day. Today is an attack day. And if the enemy sees that you will tolerate it, if the enemy sees that you just, you know, not even try to claim the promises of God to get out from under it, then tomorrow he will magnify it again. It will begin to grow. Let's don't let what the enemy does grow. Let's don't let what the enemy does to us settle into our emotions, get into our feelings, get into the way we talk, get into the way we praise. Somebody help me in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and give God a crazy praise. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Somebody shout amen. amen. Matthew's gospel, chapter 6, verse 34. Matthew's gospel, chapter 6, verse 34. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. The Lord's warning you that in every day there can be some evil in that day. How many of you with me? Say amen. That every day it might come through a co-worker. It might come through a memory from the past. It might come through your emotions. It might come through fear. It might come through the economy. It might come as you look at your bank account, how much money you have. You got a bill in that you can't pay. It might come through one of your children. It might come through some old thing that's messing with you. It might come through a symptom. It might come through a circumstance. It might be a giant that rises up in your life. Every day, every day is going to have something that will try you that day. But you've got to remember that this is the day that the Lord made and I will rejoice. Anybody going to shout with me right now? Anybody going to rejoice with me on this Sunday morning? 
I'm determined to help you and me live it every day. That every day, no matter what time it starts, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, you wake up with it from a bad dream, no matter what it is, that that day that Jesus is the same today, that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the same today. Somebody shout, today is my day. In the name of Jesus, sufficient unto the day. In other words, every day there's going to be something that can try you. Something that will try to work against you. Once the enemy sees that it's got a hold of you, he will add to it the next day and the next day and the next day. That's why the churches are not full. That's why the people all over the earth have given up. Perilous times have come. Their eyes are on the Democrats or the Republicans or the government or the taxation. All of this mess all of these circumstances that's why we've got shootings in our schools that's why we've got problems at airports that's why we've got sickness and disease running rampant but Jesus is the same today then hallelujah are you with me will you join with me in winning the victory every day Will you join with me in triumphing every day? Will you join me in living the abundant life every day? Will you join with me as we shake off those heavy bands and we live in joy unspeakable and peace like a river in the name of Jesus? Somebody shout amen. Some of us are still living under the influence of old days. Don't shout me down just because my wife's beautiful to me. We're still living under the influence of old days, old times, and things that have happened to us. Romans chapter 8, verse 36 and 37. Right now, a lot of your parents, a lot of your grandparents, a lot of your friends are in trouble physically and emotionally. You know why? Stress. Yeah. <laughs> Worry and stress. You might as well amen me. I'm telling the truth. Yeah. Worry and stress. Worry over everything. Hallelujah. The Bible says if you commit your way to the Lord, he will establish your path. You're not to let other people establish your path. You're to commit it all to God. He will establish your path. But the enemy wants you to get it loaded down with burdens and cares so that they will establish your emotions, establish your future, establish your personality. Don't you want everything that the enemy has done to you that, is in, that has brought some things into your personality? Don't you want it out of you? Don't you want anything of the way you talk, the way you act, the way you react, the way you do things, the way you are with other people? Don't you want if the enemy caused any of that to get off of you in the name of Jesus? Don't you want to live free from the influence of what's happened to you? Free from the emotions as what has happened to your personality. Ooh. What would we be like if we live free like that? How would we wake up in the morning, glory to God, and our feet hit the ground? Every devil that tried to camp out with us would flee because we're not inflicted. We're not messed with anything, even down to the core of our being. We are free from everything that anybody has ever done to us. How many of you believe it? Say amen. And is it written, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. Are you going to listen to me? This is what the Bible says. We are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for a slaughter. That's what it says way back in the old covenant. That we're like sheep for a slaughter, that we're being killed all day long. But I want you to notice what Paul said in verse 37. He said, no. No, we got to stop that kind of living. No, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. So. I'm going to get out of my mind that I'm a sheep going to the slaughter. I'm going to get out of my mind that I'm killed all day long. I'm attacked all day long. I'm attempted all day long. I'm struggling all day long. I'm depressed all day long. I'm in fear all day long. No, I'm more than a conqueror. I don't need to be drunk all day long. Come on, somebody. I'm, I'll be drunk all day long or under the influence of drugs all day long. I want the Zetas to know down there in Mexico and all of them other people down there in Mexico that we're putting up a bloodline along the Rio Grande River. Oh, come on. 
that we've had enough of these drugs flowing into Abilene, flowing into our kids. We've had enough of it. I don't care. It doesn't matter if they legalize anything. We don't need to be drunk with that stuff. If we get filled with the Holy Spirit, if we get filled with the Word of God, if we rejoice and be glad in today, there's nothing else that we need in the name of Jesus. Those are weapons formed against us. Anybody going to listen to me this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? It's affecting this nation. No, we're more than conquerors. Not all day long. I'm not going to go through this all day long. I'm not going to feel like this all day long. I'm not going to be sad all day long. I'm not going to be depressed all day long. No, this is the day. Try it with me. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I mean, y'all love me anyhow. Ooh, this is the truth. I will rejoice and be glad in it, in Jesus' name. I'm going to give you some things. Luke chapter 11, verse 3. The disciples came to Jesus and said, teach us how to pray. In the prayer that Jesus said, he said, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Notice this statement he says right here. Give us this day our daily bread. Hmm. He didn't pray the prayer and said, ever so often if you would please give us a little bit of help. Ever so often give us a little bit of bread. Ever so often give us a little bit of help. Ever so often let me have a crumb. Ever so often give me a little bit of peace in the midst of the storm. He said, no, you need to say every day. Somebody shout every day. Give us this day, today, my daily bread today. Give me what you have in store for me today. If you read way back in the book of Exodus when the children of Israel would wake up every morning and walk outside their tent door, there was an allotment of food laying out on the front porch. They didn't have to go looking for it. They didn't have to go to the store and buy it. They didn't have to trade and barter to get it. They didn't have to do nothing to earn it. Then when they walked outside, there was what they needed every day. It was called manna. Manna means what is it? What is it? Say that with me. What is it? That means their faith made it what it was. If you ate it by faith, it could taste like a 16-ounce ribeye steak. It could taste like some enchiladas and some tacos. I purposely, I hope my aunt doesn't get angry with me, but I purposely, when I talked to my mother about what we should eat at Uncle, after Uncle Harold's funeral, I said, Mama, let's get some abuelos over there. Let's just get some tacos. Let's get some enchiladas over there because I hadn't had any of that in a mighty long time, Granny. And I knew and I told everybody I can't wait to get home because when I get there, even though that we're going to celebrate his home going, we're going to celebrate some enchiladas and some tacos. How many with me say amen. amen? So I want you to know my wife knew about that and my wife went over there and she had him fix up my plate. And she had to carry it over to me with both hands. She couldn't even hold it with one hand because it was loaded down with so much. She walked over to him and said, this is for pastor. He hasn't had any of this in a little while. And so they loaded it down. Bless God, I was looking for somebody to bring me a shovel. Huh? I walked out the door like this. God's good, amen. Where's Chloe when I need her? Hallelujah. The other day, Chloe's mother called me on the telephone. She said that Chloe was walking down the hall at home. And she looked at her and she was walking funny. And she said, Chloe, what are you doing? She says, I'm walking like pastor. <laughs> oh, God, I need a healing. <laughs> Have you with me? Say amen. Oh, no, you know, you want, them to, you know, you want them to get something and they get walking like me. Glory to God. How many know God? Give God a crazy praise. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, I'm going to stop right here. I will not go any farther till I know that you want some things in your heart and your mind 
that you're going to grab a notebook. You're going to get the CD. You're going to get it on DVD. You're going to watch it on the internet. We're making it so many ways that you can get it. I'm going to give you some scriptures right now that if you'll begin to pray over them and ask God to help you to get them, you have a helper. His name is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is also the spirit of truth or he is the spirit of the scriptures. He is the spirit that helped them write the Bible. He is the spirit of the Bible. He is the Holy Spirit. So not only did he write the Bible, he helps you to believe the Bible. He helps you to receive the Bible. He helps you to walk in the promises of the Bible. He reminds you of what the Bible says. He said he reminds you of everything that's ever been said by God the Father, God the Son. Anybody going to shout with me a little bit of amen? I'm going to tell all of you teenagers over there chewing your gum that when you get a little bit older in life that you can tell the devil two plus two is four and that will not defeat him. You can tell him a little bit of biology that you cut that frog open and dissected him but that's not going to whip the devil. But what I'm telling you today will defeat your fears, your worries, your discouragements and your disappointments. And then all of a sudden you get to be in your 20s. You marry the person of your dreams and you're going through a little bit of hell on earth and you're saying God why aren't you helping me and God's going to remind you that on the first Sunday of November in 2013 he gave you a way of escape he gave you the way to get the victory over every day that's what church is really about church is to feed you the ammunition that you need to defeat what's coming in the name somebody give God a crazy praise Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Hang on, we're going to go to the book of Psalms and Proverbs. Here is the first one, Psalms 145, verse 2. Psalms 145, verse 2. Every day will I bless you. Every day will I bless you. Try it with me. Every day will I bless you. Come on. Ooh, I got up too early. I won't even be able to have a cup of coffee. I won't be able to eat that nice bacon that my wife fried up for me this morning. Them taters, that flour milk gravy, those biscuits, and that Jimmy Dean whole hog sausage. I don't have time for nothing, but you better be blessing the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Make up your mind right now. No matter what it is, you're going to keep blessing the Lord. Somebody shout, bless the Lord. Forget not all of his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities. Who heals all thy diseases. Who redeems thy life from destruction. And crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Those scriptures are encapsulated in, I will bless the Lord. Blessing the Lord brings those promises, brings those answers. Every day I will bless the Lord. Who wrote this? This was written by a guy tempted by women. He liked to walk out on the balcony and watch naked women take a bath. How did he overcome it? He overcame it by blessing the Lord. You will overcome your weaknesses by blessing the Lord. You will overcome your temptations by blessing the Lord. Hmm. Anybody want to shout amen? Amen. I know I can do this with this particular woman. Can I bore you just for a minute? I'll pay you by the hour. Shanda. Stand right here, please. Let's say that I'm a particular man. She's a particular woman. Woo, baby. I'm over here at work. She's a co-worker. If I'm not careful, the enemy will cause my eye to move that direction. You can close your mouth, Anna Karen. I'm not going to surprise you. Anna Karen was like this. I mean, y'all love Jesus. Say amen. All of a sudden, something begins to come in my mind called temptation. I get close enough and she says, hello, big boy. Try it. me love her. You old flirt, you. <laughs> I had to pick a safe soul. 
all of a sudden my mind, if I'm not careful, moves that direction. Anytime a man moves or a woman moves the direction of whom they're not supposed to be with, they start losing their natural affection. You might as well say amen. A man's to find a wife, not a woman. He that finds a wife finds a good thing, not a woman. You might as well amen me. I got you locked in. We took the batteries out of your car. You love Jesus. What I've got to do as a man of God is I've got to begin to bless the Lord. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I praise you. I begin to magnify the Lord. Not look at her body. Not look at her shape. Hello, Dolly Parton. Not look at her shape. Not look at her form. Not let that run through my mind. But I got to get back to blessing the Lord. I know I'm talking to somebody. I know, I know if it ain't, I'm already helping you made out. Give this big flirt a hand clap in the Lord. <laughs> Have you let me say amen? amen? Everything in life, you've got to bless the Lord. When you open up that bill for and you got a daughter in it, bless the Lord all day long. That was written by a man tempted by women. He loved women. He loved to look at women. He loved to fight battles. He, would, he was never lost a battle on the battlefield, but he always lost in the bedroom. Where do you lose? Give the Lord blessing there. All of this crazy culture all of these people disobeying the word of God trying to find in the Bible ways to ways to sin ways to disobey outs is it okay surely a loving God surely a loving God a loving God sets parameters on how we are to live just like a loving dad doesn't say okay son stick your finger in that electric socket I love you so much it's not going to shock you it doesn't matter how much daddy loves you if you stick your finger in the electric socket his love is not going to keep you from getting shocked you play in the street the love of your mom and daddy is not going to protect you if you play in the street quit associating the love of God with all of this disobedience somebody help me somebody have some church with me how you appreciate this amen Ooh, I started early so I could finish late hallelujah psalms 119 verse 164 remember I'm talking about a man that would get messed up he had to learn some ways to make it he says here seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgment he developed an amount of time to praise God What have you, how many things do you go through in a day? Is it five? Praise God, six. Is it ten? Praise God, eleven. How many times a day do you praise God? Have you gotten to where you praise Him in all things? In everything you're giving Him thanks. Seven times a day do I praise Him. Seven times a day do I praise you. He developed a certain amount of time. In fact, if you study the story of his life, he praised God before he went to bed. He had his guards awake him at 12 o'clock, a little before 12, so that he could praise God as, the, as that day ended and praise God as the new day began. He learned to surround himself with praise today. If you want to get out of the problems of today, don't wait to praise God tomorrow. Don't lay down and throw the covers over your head and take a pill. Praise God in the middle of that day. Bless him then. Bless him there. Well, you know, pastor, I can't do that at work. They won't like it. Your work is not your source of supply. God is your source of supply. Oh, are you with me? Oh, are you with me? Hallelujah. I listened to an evangelist the other night on TBN. I've had lunch with this evangelist, and I've worked with this evangelist and fellowship with him and his wife before. And uh, he was talking about when he was a young man, his mama and daddy were great prayer warriors and ministers. 
this particular evangelist talked about that when he got his driver's license, he went to his mom and dad and said, I'm leaving home. I want to sow some wild oats. I want to drink some. I want to carouse around. I want to go to a bar. There's some things I want to do. And so when he turned 16, he got in the car that his mom and daddy bought him and he took off. He took off down the road hundreds of miles. That first night he went into the bar. He got drunk in the bar. He was doing some things in the bar. But when he got back to the hotel without anybody knowing where he was, there was a note on the hotel door of, that, of, of the hotel they were staying at from his daddy. Dear Dwight Thompson. Dear Dwight Thompson, I am your daddy. I am the room next door. I'm staying the night in the room next door. When you wake up in the morning, I will be here. I will be there. I am not going to leave you. If you go to the bar, I'm going to the bar with you and praising God while you're there. If you take up with a woman, I'm going to be right there with you and praise God while you're with that woman. Hallelujah. He ran to the door and knocked on it. His dad answered the door. He said, Daddy, how did you know I was here? He said, Mama got to praying. And God told him, Mama, the name of the city that you were in, the name of the bar that you were in, the name of the hotel that you were at, the number of the room that you were in. I got in the car and drove here and praised God all the way. Dwight Thompson looked at daddy and said, you know, I really don't need this life. Let's go home. I need to do what God called me to do. Somebody help me. You know what our problem is? We give up, we give in, we give out when a little bit of trouble comes into our family and we don't wake up and say, today, today, he's the same today. Your children have calls on their life. They're appointed to serve God. When they got into some trouble, we fell apart instead of praising God. Let's praise him together right now. Somebody help me. Seven times a day. Somebody shout seven times a day. Come on, somebody help me. Somebody help me. I'm almost through with my introduction. Psalm 71, 24. Psalm 71, 24. My tongue shall talk of your righteousness all day. I am the righteousness of God. Jesus was made unto me righteous. I am not what I've done wrong. Quit talking about your past. Quit letting people talk to you about your past. Quit thinking about your past and say, I am the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Talk of that righteousness all day long. Talk about it all day long. Come on. I am the righteousness of God. Say it with me. I am the righteousness of God. What's that supposed to do? That's supposed to take away from me anything anybody did to me. Huh? Look at me. I was 18 years old. I was dating a girl in high school. We were in front of her parents' house. She was crying. She was so angry at her dad. She was so angry at her dad that there in the front of the house she had to take every piece of her clothes off. Every piece of her clothes off. I was 18 years old. And she began to take every piece in within a matter of moments with, before I could even think, before I could even make a move. She was naked from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Completely naked, 18 years old. You said, I can't believe he's sharing this. All of those things that happened to you in your life are to get inside your mind and then be play with them later on in your life. I could take you to the street. I can take you to the house. Every time I pass that house, I can see that 50, I know that 60 model Ford Falcon. And the enemy can re, try to replay it in my mind. Here's what I've got to do. Talk of his righteousness all day long. Why did that happen? Why did that take place? 
I'm coming home on the bus from Abilene High. I have run in the Gatesville Relays. We have gotten the silver medal from the mile relay. We're coming home from the Gatesville Relays. I am a junior at Abilene High School. I'm there with the whole track team. In the back of the track team, Floyd, in the very back of the bus, one of the boys had snuck on a, a, an ice chest full of alcohol. The guys are in the front. The, 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 the teachers are, no, the, the coaches are at the front. Never even look back, never even know as the alcohol is passed around all inside the bus. Why do things like that happen to boys, boys? Or it's the simple fact of the enemies trying to set up something that can become established in your life and mess with you the rest of your life. Because one of my friends named Mike, that same year he went to Austin, Texas, and he ran in the mile. He got scholarships to universities all over the United States. But Mike would take that alcohol into his body as a junior. He would continue to do it. It would continue as we were juniors and seniors to be snuck onto that yellow dog bus at Abilene High. Mike would stay in that alcohol. He would stay that way. And one day, Mike, when he would go to the college where he had gotten a full ride, a full scholarship, Mike would drink, run night, and do something that he shouldn't have done. Get kicked out of college and lose his scholarship. It was a setup. It was an enemy working to destroy his life. And until this day, Mike's life is messed up because that one night started the whole adventure. I'm talking to you pretty blunt, but it seems like we've got to go there in these last days to pull us out of the dark into his marvelous light. Anybody going to appreciate what I'm telling to you? It's those kind of encounters. I've got to learn to speak all day long of his righteousness. Not when I get home, call you on the telephone, call somebody on the telephone and talk to them about how bad the day was unless they are stronger than me spiritually. Because if they're stronger than me spiritually, I'm asking for help. But if they're not, I'm gossiping about the day that I've had. You might as well give God a crazy praise. Almost through. How many getting something out of this? Come on, don't talk about your old marriage. Don't talk about that old boyfriend, girlfriend. Don't talk about your mistakes. Don't talk about it. Talk about your the righteousness of God. Almost through, almost through, hallelujah. Turn with me again in Psalms 44, verse eight. Psalms 44, verse eight. In God we boast all day long. How do you boast in God all day long? God is for me, who can be against me? God is love and he loves me. You've got to learn to boast in God. I said you got to learn to boast in God. Come on. When you were young, you boasted about some things that you're completely ashamed of today. You got to learn to boast in God. Say it with me. Boast in God. You got to learn it. Lord, you're the glory and the lifter of my head. God, you're my shade by day and you're my defense by night. If an arrow is coming at me, it's going to fall. A thousand shall fall at my side. Ten thousand in my right hand, but not one shall come nigh me. Anybody going to boast in God with me? He's the glory and the lifter of my head. Come on. Turn with me to the book of Proverbs. I've got to hurry. Proverbs 23, 17. Let not your heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear, the reverence of the Lord all day long. Even when you get mad, stay in the reverence of God. Even when something goes crazy, keep reverence with God. Hold on to reverence with God. Some of you get way too angry. angry. Your mates cut up with you about your anger. You make fun of your anger. You say, well, you know, oh, so-and-so, they just like that. Quit being like that. Well, you know how I am. Well, we know we're tired of how you am. 
You're not all by yourself. You're not here to please yourself. You're here to please God. Aren't you tired of stingy gut living? I am going to be in the reverence of the Lord all day long. Why? Because when I get older, I want to live healthy. I don't want to live in stress. I'm here as a pastor. And I've got all kinds of people saying, pray for this person, pray for that person. You know, we're praying for our grandparents, we're praying for our parents, we're praying for our relatives. How come, how come? The reason how come is most of their life they did some of the dumb, stupid things and didn't walk in the reverence of God. If you sow to the flesh, you reap corruption. If you walk in control and manipulation, if you walk, you don't change from glory to glory to glory and get over into the realm of glory that no weapon formed against you will prosper. The elders should be able to teach the younger and today many of the elders are too afflicted to be able to tell the younger anything. They have spiritual moments instead of spiritual life. Lift your hands and give God a crazy praise. But be thou in the fear of the Lord all day long. I want you to say this with me. I've got the Lord. Lord. Try it with me. I've got the Lord. Come on, just do it with a little bit more uh, excitement. I've got. Come on, somebody say me. I've. Oh my God, it's kind of weak, but I've got the Lord. You need to remember that no matter what happens. I've got the Lord. He is on my side. Quit acting like you're by yourself. Quit acting like that problem's so big. Quit acting like those people are so bad. Ain't nobody bad like God can get bad. I'm almost through. Almost through. Ephesians 6, 6, 13. Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Have you ever had an evil day? A crazy day? You take the whole armor of God to withstand it. It means that you can withstand it. You can withstand I can withstand it. It means it doesn't get into you because you can withstand it. It means it's not going to affect you tomorrow because you whooped it today. You withstood it. Hallelujah. We're standing the evil day. Having done all to stand, stand. Verse 14. Therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Get it on you. You got to get the truth on you. Having on the breastplate of right. Have it on. I am the righteousness of God. Verse 16, or oh 15. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The word of God always brings peace. The Lord spoke to me the other day. He said, in December, I want you to preach because I told the angels, told glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And everywhere Jesus when he brought peace. They were full of devils one minute, the next minute living in total peace. Living naked in a graveyard, the next minute clothed and in the right mind. Peace. Wherever he went, he brought peace. He was the prince of peace. And if there's one thing we need in 2014, we need to know how to walk in peace. Almost through. Above all, take the shield of faith. Take it. Above all, I want to thank all of you for the pastor appreciation in October. One of the things that somebody brought to me was a stand. On the stand, there is the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith. It's there on the stand. And all you've got to do is go to the stand and pick it up and put it on yourself. And I've got it now in my office, all of those pieces. And it labels them, all of the pieces, and so that I can see them, that I can know I can take it off the stand. I can take it out of the word of God and I can put it, you can put it on yourself. Take the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take, take, take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. 
Let me give you this and I'm going to quit. 2 Corinthians 4, 16. How many are getting something out of this? Today. That day. That day. I'd gotten food poisoning a few years ago. Don't know how I get it. Didn't like it at all. And I was laying in bed. I couldn't, oh my God, I was, my head was spinning. And I kept hearing this. And see if I'm crazy. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. And I could see that little image and I just wanted to kick his rear. Have me with me, say amen. Speedy, thank you, baby. Speedy was a little bit slowy that day. I had to preach that night. I couldn't move. I rolled out of the bed. I'm like this. I'm, I'm going to the shower. Like this. Honest to God. Think about this. This is on the internet all over the world. And <laughs> I got a scripture for myself. Lo, I'm with you always. And I'm going in there and I turn the water on. And you know how you can push, push this thing and it keeps the water from going down the drain? And I push it on so the water, and I just climb over into the bathtub, and I, but I keep letting the shower just run over me. And I, I go in there and I'm just barely able to get dressed, and I go on my hands and knees to the car. I pull myself up, and I said, in the name of Jesus, I am going to go find the greasiest, spiciest pizza I can find in Abilene and I'm going to eat it in the name of Jesus and I kept praising God oh and I was going how are you with me by the time I got to the pizza place I was healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet because I said I'm called to preach and I'm going to do it in the name of Jesus. Floyd came up after the praise. You saw him do it. I held him and he wept. And he said, I was so glad to be here today to sing with you. And I said, Floyd, you're called to do this. And I said, the devil can't stop you from your call. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. This is the key to it all. If you take that inside man, that spiritual man, and you give him the word of God every day. Somebody say every day. All of this other stuff will start showing up in your day. And you will win every day. How are you with me? Say amen. For light affliction is just for a moment. The devil wants it to last longer than a moment. Which works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. God's good. Baby, will you please, will you stand together with me? My goodness, every day, every day. Ezekiel said, I was among the captives by the river Shabar. Think of that, Ezekiel 1. I was among the captives by the river Shabar. What a thing to say. He's saying he's locked up. He's, he's being held captive. He's on a chain gang. He said, but the heavens opened and I saw visions of God. He didn't give in to the, he didn't give in to being a captive. He didn't give in to what was going on. He could still see visions of God. Let me say it like this. Isaiah said it. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. 
Uzziah was his friend. Uzziah was his closest friend. So he says it like this. In the year that my best friend died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. God came to Jeremiah and he said, Jeremiah, your mate is going to die. He said it. Told Jeremiah. He said, but don't get sad. Don't. He said, just keep worshiping me. Jeremiah was able to do it. And because he did it through that death and burial of his precious mate, God gave Jeremiah one great vision, one great victory, one great miracle after another. You got to trust God. Tough times don't last. Tough people do. Are you listening to me? Tough people do. Because they do this every day. Every day. Can I get you to do something with me before we leave? Can I get those of you that are willing to step out of your seat and come stand with me and say this with your stand, having done all to stand, I am going every day. Say every day. Every day. Say it again. Every day I'm going to get the victory in that day. I'm going to live in victory that day. No matter what happens that day, I'm going to get the victory that day. That day. Are you with me? How many took to heart what I preached to you today? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So when you're ready, step out and come here with me. Hallelujah, Lord. In Jesus' name. Every day. I'm coming, Lord, so that every day that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today. That I'm not going to let nothing carry over to the next day. I'm not going to let the past mount up into my today. I'm not going to let days go by mess with my today. Not even yesterday. Come on now. Come on now. Don't stare into space. Start talking to God. Start talking to God. Tell Him I want to win every day. I'm going to praise you every day. I'm going to bless you every day. Every day. This is the day that the Lord has made. 